Hello everyone, with the Jamaica here. Welcome to this updated video on the weather across Jamaica and the rest of the Caribbean. It is Tuesday evening, November 14, 2023. Now before we jump into it, please ensure that you guys like the video, share it, subscribe and tap the notification bell so that you'll be notified every time I post a brand new video. Feel free to leave a comment down in the comment section letting me know what the weather has been like in your year recently. Also feel free to ask any weather related question that you might have about the future of the day in your specific era. Alright, so let us take a look at what the US National Hurricane Center is showing on their 7 day graphical tropical weather look. We can see that they've highlighted that area right there off the southeastern coast of the United States, which now has a 10% chance of cyclone formation within the, the next 7 days, and that era that had a high 70% chance of cyclone formation within the next 7 days across the central and western Caribbean now has 10% less, so it's down to 60% chance of cyclone formation within the next 7 days and it now has a 30% chance of cyclone formation within the next 2 days. According to the Hurricane Center, a large area of disorganized showers and thunderstorms over the southwestern Caribbean Sea is associated with a broad trough of low pressure. Environmental conditions appear marginally conducive for development of the system and a tropical depression could form late this week while the system begins moving northeastward across the western and central portions of the Caribbean Sea. Interests in Jamaica, Cuba, Haiti, the Dominican Republic, the southeastern Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos Islands should monitor the progress of this system. Regardless of development, this system has the potential to produce heavy rains over portions of the Caribbean coast of Central America and the Greater Antilles through the end of the week. So even although the chances have decreased, the code red has gone down to a code orange, there is still a chance of this system developing and the Hurricane Center is also saying that even if it doesn't develop, there is still going to be a lot of flood triggering rainfall taking place across the Greater Antilles including Jamaica. And if we take a look at the Euro model, we are definitely going to be seeing that. So we can see that as early as 12Z on Wednesday, look at this. This is actually valid for 7 a.m. tomorrow. We are starting to see some of the greens starting to make their way across sections of Jamaica. And we can already see these clouds on the rainbow satellite images right here. Lots of deep convection associated with this system. And the upper level wind shear can be seen coming in from the west right now. And tomorrow is going to be coming in from the southwest. So even if whatever we're seeing right now on the Euro model forecast isn't rain, it's definitely going to be in the way of some amount of overcast skies. So this is valid for 7 a.m. and we see the greens even all the way up to 1 p.m. on a Wednesday. And as we go out in time, we start to see the greens even more. This is Thursday. Thursday going into Friday, early Friday morning. And we see a lot of yellows, oranges right there. This is valid for 1 a.m. on Friday on the Euro model. So yes, the rainfall begins on Wednesday. Then it goes into Thursday and Friday the most rainfall. Then we can see it going throughout the day on Friday. Then on Saturday we start to get some kind of relief in terms of the rainfall. If we take a look at the GFS model and what it is showing, so this is the 18Z run of the GFS. Unlike the Euro model that was the 12Z run that was the midday run, this is the latest run right here. And we can see that yes, we start to see the greens that represent rainfall. This is valid for 1 p.m. on Wednesday. And we see the greens that represent rainfall right there, especially to the south of Jamaica. So as stated, even if it's not rainfall, it's definitely going to be more in the way of overcast skies. And we can see all of that going into Thursday as well. Friday, this is valid for 7 a.m. on Friday. And look at that. We have the GFS a bit more robust than what the Euro model was showing. Definitely some yellows and oranges in there. Even that L that represents the center of low pressure. Maybe a tropical depression trying to form. Then moving ahead to about 1 p.m. on Friday. Then early Saturday morning, we start to see majority of the mess associated with that system we move into sections of Hispaniola, Haiti, Dominican Republic. And by early Sunday morning, 
all of that should be out of the jamaica area so we're definitely going to be getting in you know, on some wet weather starting wednesday thursday into friday and we see that both the euro and the gfs malls are in consensus with this and we know that when we're looking at both of them we're looking for what both of them are showing and we see the similarities even although we have a few contrast here and there if we take a look at what the United States Climate Prediction Center is showing on their Global Tropics Hazards Outlook, we can see that for the next three weeks, they have everything planned out. So take a look at the key at the bottom and take a look at what we see across the Western Hemisphere. So we can see that around the time period from November 22 to November 28, we can see that they have some of the Central and Western Caribbean, even the Southeastern Gulf of Mexico highlighted in some light shades of greens. And when we take a look at the key at the bottom, that's on the low end scale of some amount of above normal rainfall. Keep in mind that this map was issued today, November 14th, it's usually issued every Tuesday. And we can see that for the time period, November 29th to December 5th, we don't have much in the forecast for the Western Hemisphere. Everything seems to be on the clear. No tropical cyclone probability, no above normal rainfall, no below normal rainfall, and no above normal temperatures or below normal temperatures. And we're indeed grateful for that if that's exactly what happens. As it relates to the surface map of the Atlantic for this evening, we can still see the blue line right here and the reds associated with it, associated with a cold front that stretches all the way from the northern sections of North Atlantic all the way down into portions of the southwestern Atlantic including the Bahamas, sections of Florida, the Gulf of Mexico. We can also see these broken lines right here associated with that trough of low pressure that's now affecting portions of Honduras, Nicaragua, the southwestern Caribbean Sea as well as another trough right here affecting portions of the southern Bahamas, Turks and Caicos, sections of the eastern portions of Cuba and Haiti as well and if we take a look at the visible satellite images of the Atlantic before the sun went down we can see the clouds that stretch all the way from the northern section of the North Atlantic all the way down into portions of the Bahamas, Florida, the Gulf of Mexico associated with that cold front we can also see the clouds associated with that other trough across portions of the western Caribbean that's trying to get its act together We'll be talking more about the weather across the Caribbean later on. Let us focus our attention on the prediction that was made in yesterday's video about the weather across Jamaica for today, Tuesday. It was stated that we would have received some amount of early morning rainfall across sections of eastern Jamaica, and then spilling into sections of central and western Jamaica during Tuesday afternoon. And we know when we're talking about eastern parishes, we're talking about those parishes in the county of Surrey. So sections of Kingston, St. Andrew, Portland, St. Thomas, Central Parishes, we're talking about St. Anne, St. Mary, St. Catherine, Clarendon, Manchester, Western Parishes, we're talking about those parishes in the county of Cornwall, so Trelawney, St. James, Hanover, West Milan, and St. Elizabeth. And what ended up happening? We saw that the early morning Cuban Doppler radar images were posted on our Twitter page. Keep in mind that they are not only posted on our Twitter page, but our Facebook Instagram and TikTok page. So if you have one of those platforms, please ensure that you follow us there because we don't only make posts on our YouTube page and you're definitely going to want to see these mini posts being made. So we can see that at 3.50 a.m. we saw the Cuban Doppler radar images being posted. Keep in mind that the Jamaican Doppler radar has been out for a good year now. Hopefully they get that sorted out. And we can see that we have some amount of greens and yellows heading into sections of Portland and St. Thomas during uh, that time period and even although we didn't have a post highlighting what was taking place during the afternoon hours we saw that yes we indeed had some amount of build up of clouds especially across inland areas of some central parishes 
then definitely across sections of some western parishes so definitely sections of southern st james hanover definitely sections of the cockpit country got in on some amount of isolated thunderstorm activity and we saw that even better on the inferred satellite images that show the sparkling white dots across those very spots so this does indeed paint a picture of what was predicted even although it was not as robust as what was predicted and we do know exactly why it wasn't as what was predicted because of all of these high level clouds being streaked off towards the east all because of this trough of low pressure and usually when we have all of that high level or upper level clouds being pushed off across Jamaica that indeed affects the daytime heating convection that we usually receive across the island so we don't have the usual moisture the low level flow then we don't have the full heating of the sun heating up the atmosphere so that it could be more conducive to some amount of thunderstorm activity during the afternoon especially with these upper level flows the upper level winds moving in from the west and blocking out the direct sunlight so this does indeed explain why we didn't get it as predicted but yes we indeed got it as seen by the sparkling white dots but it was more confined to sections of let's say eastern Westmoreland, southeastern Hanover, section of southern St. James, northwest St. Elizabeth. And if we take a look at the Doppler radar images right now, we do see that we indeed still have some amount of isolated rainfall taking place across sections of eastern Hanover as indicated by those yellows and greens. Taking a look at the temperatures right now, we can see that we have 28 degrees Celsius in Montego Bay, 27 degrees Celsius in Kingston, and by about 3 a.m. on Wednesday, the temperature should dip down to about 26 degrees Celsius in Montego Bay, 23 degrees Celsius in Kingston. Taking a look at the temperature forecast, we can see that Jamaica is going to be embedded in some slight yellow shades. For the most part, it looks to be average, but we do see some slight yellow shades right there across the island and this is valid for 18 day on Wednesday which is actually 1 p.m. on Wednesday so we should be getting 1 degree Celsius above normal temperatures for Wednesday I don't know the normal temperatures for the month of November across Jamaica are about the same as 88 degrees Fahrenheit and when we take a look at the thermometer 88 degrees Fahrenheit is almost the same as 30 degrees Celsius so it should be receiving anywhere from 30 to 31 degrees Celsius at most for Wednesday's temperature across Jamaica. As it relates to the dry ear map, we do see all of that dry ear stretching all the way like a tongue from Africa and Southern Europe all the way into portion of the Eastern and portion of the Central Caribbean. Majority of the portion where Jamaica is located as well as the Western portion of the Caribbean is experiencing a lot of moist air and it's gonna be that way especially considering the system that's moving in from the southwest across the island so we see a lot of blues lots of moist air across the Jamaica area and that is definitely gonna be maintained as it relates to the Sahara dust forecast this map shows the prediction for 2 p.m. on Wednesday and we do see that the Sahara dust should be getting even closer towards the Caribbean we see the Sahara dust represented by the browns so definitely sections of Tobago, Trinidad right there should be starting to get in on some slight hazy weather but it won't even be that noticeable while Jamaica should still be in the clear. Taking a look at the wave forecast, we still see much of the same up to two or more meter wave heights across the east and the south portion of the island while the north and the west should be getting in on anywhere from one 1.5 meter wave height and that's because the winds are gonna be coming in from the let's say east southeast for the most part strongest on the south coast where we see those yellows that represent 25 knot winds or more while the north coast should be getting anywhere from let's say 10 to 15 or even gusting to 20 knots and we do see that here piling up right there maybe across the kingdom of some central and western parishes so maybe some afternoon convection again across those very areas and with the upper level winds coming in from the southwest for tomorrow this does indeed paint a picture that all of these clouds are gonna be blowing in 
across the island from the southwest so definitely more in the way of overcast guys who knows maybe even some rainfall from the system coming in across the island in that fashion and if we take a look at the rainfall forecast for tomorrow this is valid for 2 a.m on a wednesday and we do see the blues that represent rainfall and where do we see them across sections of eastern jamaica so definitely sections of st thomas portland and keep in mind that this is valid for 2 a.m jamaica time so definitely sections of eastern jamaica st thomas portland maybe hopefully spilling into sections of kingston and st andrew for those persons who need the rain and then by afternoon we start to see a widespread kind of a thing taking place lots of blues that represent rainfall across eastern central and western parishes in jamaica and we see the same on both the euro and the gfs model keep in mind that this is valid for 3 pm jamaica time so it could be rainfall it could be more in the way of cloud cover we shall see exactly what unfolds on a wednesday right now the models are predicting rainfall and i wouldn't be surprised if it is more in the way of overcast skies than actual rainfall either way ensure that you bring your rain gear with you if you're planning on going out and remember if you come up on flooded roadways turn around don't drown if we take a look at the accumulated precipitation forecast we do see that there's definitely some amount of measurable amount of rainfall that's expected across jamaica for tomorrow and we can see the most of it across eastern jamaica the euro model showing some greens and yellows across central and western parishes but the most as indicated by the oranges are over the eastern side averaging up to 0 0.58 of an inch of rainfall keeping in mind that both of these maps from the euro and the gfs are showing all the rainfall that is expected from now up until 10 pm on wednesday not saying that it's going to be raining from now up all the way until then but when it does rain within that 24 hour period these are the spots that are going to be getting the most rainfall so definitely eastern jamaica on the euro same thing on the gfs gfs seeing up to 0 0.65 of an inch of rainfall across the east as well section of central and western jamaica as well getting in on some amount of rainfall we'll see exactly what unfolds we'll see which one of the models win my bet is that, that maybe the euro will win more in the way of overcast guys we'll see exactly how that goes either way we're indeed grateful that we're going to be getting in on some amount of rainfall for tomorrow we're in our final month of the rainy season across jamaica november we can see that we usually receive close to up to 50 millimeters of rainfall in kingston you can see kingston bar graph kingston's bar graph at the top while we have montego bay's bar graph at the bottom Montego Bay usually receives close to 5 inches of rainfall. You can do the math converting millimeters to inches so you know exactly how much each area gets in whatever metric you decide to use. But we know for a fact that Montego Bay usually receives more rainfall overall than in Kingston. Alright, so that's it for the forecast across Jamaica. Let us focus our attention on the rest of the Caribbean. So we don't see that we have much happening across the eastern caribbean at all but there's definitely a lot of weather to come you can see a lot of clouds associated with the intertropical convergent zone heading from east to west in the direction of trinidad and tobago sections of the windward islands we can also see that we don't have much happening right now across sections of suriname guyana venezuela but definitely as usual colombia panama costa Rica. Costa Rica, Nicaragua, Honduras, El Salvador, Guatemala, section of Belize, the Yucatan Peninsula, the Cayman Islands. And if we take a look at the Doppler radar images of the Northeastern Caribbean, we can see that this confirms it. We don't have much taking place. Just some light patches of greens here and there. Lots of heat or mist showers taking place. Most areas dry right now. Maybe the area to the southeast of Puerto Rico getting in on some amount of isolated rainfall right now. Barbados not getting in on much at all. Maybe some hit or miss isolated showers coming into sections of Martinique right now. Maybe sections of Tobago as well as we speak. Taking a look 
at the wider view of the Florida images, you can see some very heavy rain coming into sections of southeastern Florida right now. It's indicated by those greens and yellows. Sections of the Yucatan Peninsula, Belize, sections of northern Guatemala, Honduras as well. If we take a look at the temperature forecast for tomorrow, we can see that we have some amount of above normal temperatures to be received across the eastern to the central and western Caribbean as indicated by those yellows and slight oranges. As it relates to the fire and dust forecast, majority of the Caribbean should be in the clear for 2 p.m. on Wednesday. Just a light tongue of fire and dust trying to make its way into portions of Trinidad and Tobago, but that won't even be that noticeable. Majority of the dust associated with the Sahara Desert is right there across the main Devoma region as well as Africa. Taking a look at the wave forecast, we do see much of the same. The highest wave heights represented by the purples, pinks, and burgundies across sections of the Gulf of Mexico, right there off the southeastern coast of the United States, right there across the waters to the south of Haiti and Jamaica to the north of Colombia. And it all makes sense, as we can see on both the year and the JFS models, because the winds are strongest wherever we have those high wave heights. So we can see the winds averaging anywhere from 25 to maybe even 30 knots across the waters to the east of the United States, across the southeast United States, the Gulf of Mexico, not to mention to the south of Jamaica and Haiti coming in from the east across majority of the Caribbean. And wherever we have the greens, you know, that represents anywhere from 10 to 20 knots. As to let the rainfall forecast, we do see that we indeed still have a lot of rainfall to receive across sections of Florida. So if they're not already getting the rainfall right now, it's definitely going to be expected within the next 24 hours from now on to 10 p.m. on Wednesday. And we do see that for the most part, the consensus is that there's definitely going to be less rainfall across the Eastern Caribbean, the Leeward Islands, but maybe more in the way of rainfall for sections of the Windward Islands, the so Barbados, sections of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Grenada, Trinidad and Tobago, skipping ahead to the southern portion of the basin. We do see some isolated rainfall in store for sections of French Guyana, maybe northern Suriname, Guyana eastern and coastal areas of Venezuela, definitely sections of Colombia, Panama, Costa Rica, Nicaragua, and El Salvador, sections of Belize, Guatemala, Mexico, sections of the Cayman Islands, Cuba, southern Florida, the Bahamas. That's definitely where the rainfall is going to be expected during the next 24 hours. And we do see that both the Euro and the GFS models are in agreement with this. And we know that when they're in agreement like this, the chances of it actually happening are much higher. Alright, so that's it for today. Thanks for watching.